long process of developing the new bylaws, but we could not have done it without the chapter development subcommittee. And I have a few of you on today, but I wanted to let Don Sparks talk a little bit about this process. And for those of you who have not met Don, he is a wonderful person, has given so much to the Fulbright Association. Um, Don, would you like to introduce yourself? Thanks, Christine. You're, uh, you're very kind. I can't uh, resist that kind of flattery. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. Um, Don Sparks from Charleston, South Carolina, and I'm um, happy to announce um, my sixth Fulbright will be coming up in London in January. All things uh, uh, remaining calm uh, as it can be. Um, looking forward to that. Anyway, um, as far as the, the chapter development subcommittee, we had really two tasks. One is unrelated to today, but I'll briefly just 30 seconds. We've been um, looking at how to engage states that aren't represented with chapters, like for example, Nevada, like for example, Kansas, and helping them start new chapters. And that's been a, a challenge, but I think we're making some headway. So that was one side of our charge. The other side of the charge, which is germane to today's discussion, uh, with the bylaws. I was chapter uh, president off and on for a decade in South Carolina, um, no longer, but I was, and I'm also on the Fulbright board for uh, my last year. Anyway, so as a chapter president, I always struggled with the elections. It was one of our biggest chores, really, and we were always a little bit confused. And the bylaws has some inconsistencies with them. I'm sure all of you will probably have the same issues that we had. They had some inconsistencies with them. They didn't match necessarily the national uh, bylaws, the Fulbright Association. So we thought it'd be time to dust it off, uh, do some word. Right, and and um, I see um, Rich Johnson uh, on board here, who made a major contribution to such to this effort. And rather than going into the details, which uh, Christine's going to do now, I just wanted to thank her and, and also Shaz, who's no longer at the association, for the leadership in making this happen. It's not a huge deal, but it should make everyone's life a lot simpler. And um, so, Christine, I'll turn it back to you. Absolutely. Thanks, Don. Yeah, the, uh, like he said, this is really just to make things easier, more efficient for chapters. Um, and I look forward to rolling this out. So um, these were approved on July 16th by the Board of Directors, and there are two major changes that I want to address. Those major changes are term lengths and a change in the date time of elections. So update number one will go over. This is the term length update. So now uh, officers will have two year terms and board members will have three year terms. As it was in the past, the past president may serve on the board of directors as a non-voting member for one year. So this update is really to kind of address the challenges that smaller chapters have had with retaining leaders, finding new leadership. Um, and it's challenging when a president comes in, they're doing a great job, but they only have one year you know, to, do, to be president and really make those changes in the chapter. So I really hope that this helps um, with the consistency. Um, and these two changes can be seen in articles 3.1 and 4.2. Update number two, which is uh, gonna be a little bit harder to implement, it uh, changes the election cycles. So right now, our chapters are kind of doing elections at all different times throughout the year, which we understand, you know, is it's hard for some chapters to follow certain, certain time periods because of the academic calendar, um, things like that, but for the sake of efficiency and tracking from the national office, we really would like chapters to hold their elections at the same time each year. So with the new bylaws, nominations will take place between April 1st and April 30th. Elections will take place between May 1st and May 31st. And these will still be in those two week increments, but they'll just be taking place at some point within this time period. Um, with that, the terms are now June 1st through May 31st. And I'll go into a little bit how we're gonna do this transition in the next slide but these updates can be found in articles 3.2 and 3.3. So how are we gonna make this happen? Because this is a little bit complicated. I know some people have chapter, have elections planned for um, October, November. So you have two options. Either you can hold your normal 2021 election in October, November, December, whenever you had planned to have it, and then have another election in May, 2022. This of course means that that term will be much shorter, but we're not counting those short terms against term limits. 
Option B is to just wait until May 2022 for the next election. And this is something that each chapter is going to have to decide for themselves. I would appreciate if you let me know what you're planning on doing. So please just send chapters at Fulbright.org an email with a little bit of an update on what your chapter has decided. Um, but I know that different, different options work for different chapters. You're all in very different circumstances. So I understand that. Um, but those are, those are the ways we're, we're asking you to make sure that you're in compliance with these new bylaws. Don, did you have anything you'd like to add in terms of adjusting? Um, just that if, if it's impossible or very difficult to do this, um, the association board, Christine, I think would be very sympathetic to a, a petition to do something a little different, but, uh, it, generally speaking, these are fairly, these should be fairly easy to follow, I think, but if you are having problems, um, there are possibilities for exemptions or special circumstances. Of course, definitely. And as I, I'd like to reiterate, we know every chapter has a very different circumstance. You know, some chapters are covering entire states, some are just covering a small city. So it really is so different. And if you ever, ever have any questions or concerns about how these apply to your specific chapter, please send me an email. And, and Christine, so that I'm clear, that applies to both the officers and the board, right? That's short term, is that what you're saying? Yes, that's correct. Okay, okay, thank you. Just because it, it's not really fair to count against term limits when it, for example, if someone has an election in December or January, you know, we don't wanna count that against them, so. Um, I would love to open this up for questions. These new bylaws, I did send them out, but they are, they are also on our chapter resources page. And any changes that you'd like to make to the bylaws, which of course we do welcome if you find them necessary, uh, they just have to be approved by the national office. So with that, I would love to open it up for questions. Christian, there are a few chat questions if you'd like to look up in your chat box. Perfect. Sure, so I can mention a little bit about why these changes were made. Um, I think we touched on this in the beginning, but for example, the, uh, the term lengths, I've heard a lot of feedback from chapters about how it, how difficult it is to find new leadership, especially if you have a one-year term. You know, it's because if you find a good president, of course you don't want to you don't want to say goodbye to that president after one year or their second term. So having people be able to get into the board and really change the chapter for the better and implement those new new ideas, sometimes that takes a little bit longer than the short terms we're allowing for. So I hope that I hope that helps a little bit with chapters. The second update in terms of the elections, it was actually very difficult for National to keep tabs on when elections were happening because, you know, with 55 chapters all doing elections at different times, it was hard for us to track how many terms each person had already completed when they were having these elections, you know, things like that. So it will just be a much more standardized process. I hope that helps to answer your question. Yes, uh, Will, um, this, these PowerPoint slides will be sent out. Um, Tom, so in, I'll send out these slides and in these, two, in these slides, you can see where in the bylaws these changes are implemented. Christine, Andre has a, a hand raised. Sure, I'm just going through the chat questions really quick. I'll get to you in a minute, Andre. Um, Richard, yes, the past bylaws call for a minimum of two board meetings. Those are still in the bylaws. But Christine, those can be virtual. One can be virtual too. That can be virtual given the circumstances. Yes, yes. David, that is correct. Yes, the chapter president is elected from chapter wide. Um, and then the officers are normally elected from within <clears> the board. Um, they could come from gen general membership, um, but, but generally according to the bylaws, the officers are elected within the board. Let's see. Um, all right, Andre. Uh, yes, thank you, Christine. Uh, this is not directly related to the new changes, but I have a question regarding uh, 
paragraph 5.1, just a clarification on the, um, the terms of that paragraph regarding national office liability insur insurance coverage and how that uh, relates to chapters. Yes, so Did chapters, I... sorry, go ahead. Um, no, go ahead, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, chapters are covered under our liability insurance and I can actually forward you the documents that clarify that more. Um, I know John is on here. John might have a bit more information on that than I do, but I do have the documents that can clarify that. Yes, thank you. I, I believe I do. You did send me a copy of uh, the policy and I was just wondering, uh, I guess, about the meaning of national office may purchase and maintain liability insurance on behalf of any person who is a director officer or the volunteer, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it says may purchase. I, I was just wondering, can, can someone clarify that in terms, you know, it doesn't say will purchase, it says may purchase. May I purchase. just was wondering what that means. Sure. Uh, my understanding is that it, it is covered, but John, do you have any insight on that? If not, no. we can get back to you on this. So the bylaws say, may say that we may purchase things, but we do. So you, you can be assured that you're covered. One of the reasons why our chapters are constituted as uh, what might be called a subordinate organization technically, but is really as it's part of our organization. So in other words, you're not separate entities that need to have independent uh, uh, financial, legal, and uh, insurance um, uh, uh, re resources. You're, you're part of us. So in, in other words, everything we have covers you. Right. And this uh, pertains to like board and director's insurance, liability That's, insurance. That is correct. Yes. It does not cover events, uh, liability for that, because the next paragraph says uh, a chapter may purchase and maintain liability insurance for events and activities it sponsors. So this is just a recommendation or that's right. Uh, in the second one. Okay. Right. Thank you. And you, um, in terms of um, your experience, how many chapters do maintain their own uh, liability insurance for events and activities? Uh, just a ballpark guess, I guess. It's, I don't know if you have any data on that. I don't have data on that, but I suspect it's very small. Okay. Yeah, thank you. We can look into it if you'd like, but I, off the top of my head, I, I don't think many do. Just curious because our chapters discuss this and whether or not we need to get it. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, Mike, would you like to ask a question? Yeah, hi. Um, I don't know if this applies to any of the other chapters, but as you might know, Christine, for the Minnesota chapter, we were able to hold board elections and the board uh, elected all the officers from within the board, but we still don't have a precedent for the chapter. And I'm wondering if you would advise at this point, if we should hold a, a chapter wide election for president, or if uh, we should continue to try to have the board decide that. Yeah, at this point, I think it's, um, I would recommend sending out another call for nominations just for the position of president. And if no one is interested, we'll move on from there, finding other options. But that's the next step I would recommend. And then the whole chapter membership would vote on it. Yes. Or the board. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. We'll, we'll take that up to the board. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, let's see. So Carol, what Carol asks, what are the consequences if a chapter wishes to have different term limits for officers and board? Um, so the way that works is that you'll want to update your chapter's bylaws and submit those updates to the national office for approval. So basically take the bylaws that we've just given you, make any changes that you'd like, submit them to me, we will approve them um, if it's applicable.
Let's see. <clears throat> Alt mute. Currently unmuted. Alt plus. Hey, Kristen, I have a quick question. Sure. Yeah. Um, so for our chapter, for it being virtual and global, um, what are the bylaws that we have to follow? And also for the election, as you know, it's very small. Um, is it uh, possible for us to just maybe exchange rules or re-elect? Because we, we're even finding it... Um, there's not many for writers with disabilities. And uh, we have some people who support who are uh, for writers um, who are not disabled, but they're not in the in the board. So from David J. Smith. How can we um, follow that or what what are the, the laws that we 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 need to follow or Right, right. So it might just be a little bit of a different circumstance. And in the bylaws, it does note that exceptions can be made by national, depending on your specific situation. So you and I can talk offline about that, because um, you're a very new chapter, and we can kind of figure out what that looks like for you. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. Does anyone else have any questions? See, Elaine, I see your question. I'll get back to you on that uh, once I pull the bylaws up. Christine, I'm just curious. I can't remember if we discussed this or not, but do you want each chapter to um, send you back sort of their letterhead or their logo or whatever, you know, their name, their chapter to you for your files? Uh, I mean, even if we use identical language, mine would be the South Carolina chapter, for example. Do you want that back for your files or is it not, not, uh, not necessary? Um, I, I don't think that's necessary unless John has other opinions on that. Um, as long as chapters have these bylaws, they've been posted on our website, you know, I think it's okay. Yeah, we don't, we don't need everyone on this uh, call to do more than they need to. Um, yeah, I know you're all very busy. I just, you're very, I'm you're, you're, you're here very, to, to learn yeah. more about this. So. <laughs> Let's keep it simple. Keep it easy. Yes. Yes. Um, Andre, I see your hand is up. Is that just still up from earlier, or do you have another question? No, that's up from earlier. Okay. Perfect. All right. Well, like I said, I promised this would probably be the shortest webinar you ever attended for chapters. Uh, but if you have any follow-up questions after going over the bylaws, if any of your board members have questions after reviewing this recording, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. I'm happy to answer any questions you have.